coming up in this video. Our first day out at the Parham campground might have been wet, but that didn't stop us from enjoying the beach once that sunshine started to come out. With a bit of cloud in the sky, we had some lovely sunsets while we were there. We go raking for blue swimmer crabs, that and a lot more coming up in this video. I'm Mick and this is Sally. Together we've been caravanning Australia since the 1980s and more recently we started to put the videos together just to show you some of what we see out there. There's a lot to see in Australia and we hope you enjoy what we have here to show you. You can follow us on our trips via the following social media platforms. If you like the following video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. With the Parham campground only being just over 50 kilometres north of Adelaide, it was certainly an easy drive and we were soon there. Parham is a small community and it's located on the eastern side of the Gulf of St Vincent and once we reach the road that runs along the foreshore here we do that right hand turn and that'll take us down towards the campground. After doing that right hand turn we are on a dirt road and it's a good dirt road there's no issues even if it is raining and it's only a short drive and you're down at the campground. We arrived here at the campground on the Thursday preceding the Australia Day long weekend in January and uh, it's about midday when we arrived so not a lot of numbers here at this stage but no doubt they will build up as the weekend progresses. Yeah, g'day everyone, we're at the uh, Parham campground at the moment, it's trying to rain, I'm actually standing out in the rain doing this but here for four nights and it looks like it's going to be fairly well booked out tonight in the pad section at least, at this stage there's only one spare uh, pad site available for tonight but four nights and uh, then we move on to Moonda Bay on the York Peninsula and while we're here at Parham we're going to try and see if we can get some blue swimmer crabs so we'll see how we go. All the bookings for this campground need to be done online it's quite an easy process to follow once you get onto the uh, website that uh, accepts all the bookings and it'll tell you what ones are available and then you can choose from there which one you want. There was rain on the forecast on the afternoon of the day that we did arrive and uh, that's all the rain that we had for our period that we were here and uh, once that rain cleared up the ground quickly dried out and uh, it certainly wasn't muddy, there was no issues with mud at all. Dion and Sam and of course the two dogs and the two grandkids were also staying at the Parham campground whilst we were there on this occasion. and. Uh, our granddaughter was eager to give Sally a rug that she'd crocheted herself. She's quite pleased with her achievements and she thought her first rug should go to her grandmother. Sally had donated some of the wool and contents for this rug and of course a bit of encouragement towards the granddaughter. But uh, yeah, no, certainly well received. As the evening drew closer, the uh, cloud cover in the western sky as the sun was setting almost gave us two sunset colours in the one uh, horizon. There was a real rich orange in the left and uh, covered with a bit of dark orange and then it was that bright yellowish colour on the right hand side of that, something that we don't see very often. As we moved into the long weekend, the numbers within the campground had certainly picked up. There is a low um, range of sand dune I suppose, one single sand dune as it goes down between the caravan camping area and the beach and as we go over the walkway here to have a look out onto the beach it certainly has got a bit of wind blowing back across on that water. Mm -hmm. 
The campground and most of the Parham area, and certainly further north towards Port Wakefield, you're unable to fly the drone, but there is this one little patch here shown in that uh, insert on the screen there that you can get the drone up and have a look around, so it was time to put it up and see what it looked like from up above. Due to the strong winds that we're having today, we couldn't get the drone up very high before we got a wind warning, but uh, never mind, we got it up enough just to fly it around and have a bit of a look. The tide certainly goes out a long way here, and it is a, a very long walk out to the water's edge, but uh, some people do it. We actually did it. We went for a walk, and you can see some cars there driving around, but I don't think it's something that I'd like to do with a motor car, take it out on the beach and fill it up with salt water, but uh, it's not a worry to some people. While the drone was up in the air, we noticed this group of people out on the beach and they were out there celebrating Australia Day and apparently they do it each year. The tidal flats here at Parham are very good for being out on. Once the water goes out it's a firm ground and not boggy at all and there was certainly a number of people out there enjoying the day. And here we've got one of these jenkers that are used to launch their boats. He's going back in and uh, not sinking into the ground at all as it was driving along. The jinker that we're looking at now is used to tow their boats out through this shallow water to get to enough deep water which allows them to then launch their boat to go fishing. With the beach looking so nice through the eyes of the drone, we thought we'd go out and take a walk and have a look for ourselves. Once out onto the beach we discarded our footwear and off we went with the hopeful thought that we'd be able to locate it on our return. It was a beautiful day to be walking out on the beach. There was very slight cloud cover, so that sort of filtered the sun through, but you needed to be careful you didn't get sunburnt. And there was just a light breeze, and that seemed to keep the temperature down. While we are out walking on the beach, we did talk to a couple of people that had been raking for crabs and unfortunately they didn't have very much luck at all so that sort of dampened our enthusiasm for when we were going to go out but never mind that didn't put us off totally and uh, we still planned on going out the following day. The original or first jinker that was built at Parham was, was done privately, they're all privately built and it's on display here and with the sign board coming up very shortly and here it is now you can pause the video and read that if you wish and that'll tell you the story of how it all began and uh, certainly very clever with what they did they're all road registered they're registered as a uh, specific uh, vehicle built for a purpose so they've got limited use but they are, are all road registered to be out on a public road Parham does have its own sports and social club and uh, on certain nights of the week you can have meals there. Some dogs just get so excited when it's time to go for a walk and uh, they just try and race ahead all the time. But when it's time for a spell, well it's just time for a spell. Here's one of those jinkers taking a drive out in the water, not quite sure why. Uh, perhaps they've got friends or visitors up for the weekend enjoying the Australia long weekend with them. And they thought they'd take them out and give them a bit of a drive in the water just to show them how it all works.
After a quick stop at the playground, it was time to make our way back to the campground. As the weekend progressed, the weather was getting better and better by the day, and soon we had this lovely flat water here as the tide was coming in on the beach. It is a little bit hard to pick here on the camera, but you can see the water moving along the ground as the tide's pushing the water in. The water movement here certainly is different from Derby in the top of Western Australia. The water moves that fast up there, you can hear the water as it moves across the ground on its way in. As our day was drawing to an end, we were certainly treated by this very colourful sunset. We are certainly lucky in South Australia to have so many locations like this that we can watch such colourful sunsets go down with the ocean in the foreground. Tonight was one of those nights that it didn't really matter whether you looked out west or east, north or south, there was a pink haze up in the sky. just one of those times that you wish it would never end. With so much colour up in the sky, it certainly brought everyone down to the beach to have a good look at it. After a very colourful sunset the night before, we were up the next morning, ready to go and see if we could get some blue swimmer crabs as we walked across the beach raking for them. As we're getting ourselves organised to start our episode with our raking for blue swimmer crabs, the fish care volunteers came into the campground and they spoke to people who appeared as though they may be going out raking for crabs as well, and just to let them know what was required legally if you wanted to catch the crabs. So we could reduce the walking distance by approximately half. We actually drove to the entrance of the parking area where the channel started to go out into the water and it was from there that we made our way out into the water to start crabbing. These tubs that we use to put our crabs in whilst we're out raking for crabs, it's just a normal uh, reasonable size tub of any type and uh, we welded up some frames to sit the tubs onto and on the bottom of the frame was a set of lawnmower wheels so whilst you're on the beach pulling it behind you it would roll on the wheels and once you get out far enough that you're in deeper water the tub will float and of course the wheels do no serve no purpose until you come back out of the shallow water and uh, onto the dry sand again. One of the Jenkins with the boat trailer on behind and obviously they've come out and launched their boat earlier in the morning and this unit will sit here until the people come back with their boat and then they'll go out, retrieve the boat and then head home again. We were the first group of people for the day to go out and try and rake for crabs and the unfortunate part about that is of course sometimes you're out there and you're in a bit of deep water that you don't want to really be in but uh, makes it a bit hard to see the crabs with the ripple on the top but uh, still enjoyable being out there. There was a couple of fellas here that drove out on the jinker and they were fishing in the channel and they gave us a bit of advice as to where to go to try and get these crabs. There didn't appear to be too many crabs about unfortunately and uh, we were out there for nearly an hour before we even got our first undersized crab. Like most days when you're out raking for crabs, you always get a lot of undersized ones, 
and uh, certainly more undersized than what you do keepers on most occasions but there wasn't even very many undersized ones today and that was pretty much the story that everyone had been telling us in the previous days that uh, others had gone out there and tried to get crabs. The blue swimmer crab with its blue claws certainly is a specimen worthy of a good look. Whenever you put your hands into a tub that's got crabs in there, you always need to be very, very careful because they are jumping around and they will see your hands coming and if they can latch on, they'll grab hold of you. Unfortunately, one of us got caught where the crab was a bit quicker than the hand and when they latched on, they hang on and they're very difficult to get off the finger and they will draw blood. We spent the best part of three hours this morning out raking for crabs and in that three hours we only got six keepers that we could take back with us and of course as well as the six keepers we had very very uh, many uh, small ones that we had to throw back but by the time we got out there as I said we were the first ones on the water and then three hours later when we we're ready to head back in there was over 50 people that we counted out there raking for blue swimmer crabs. If you're like us and eat your crabs straight out of the shell and we don't put them into any um, sort of pickled situation or eat them with anything else, we just like to eat crab meat on our own, six really is enough for a good feed and uh, it's a bit of an effort to cook six in such a big pot but never mind, it uh, all cooked up the same as if you were cooking 60 I suppose but once they were cooked they were put on ice and cooled down and they certainly made a bit of an entree later on during that afternoon. Into a bit of an ice slurry and then drained off of course and put into the fridge where they set the meat nice and cold and oh, a very beautiful to eat. With only two of us eating crabs, of course that was three each and that was a great way to finish off the afternoon. With the orange sunrise the following morning, it was an indication that our days were now starting to warm up. With no wind at all this morning, the ocean was like glass to look at. With such calm water, it'd be interesting to know how many metres you would have to walk out in a seaward direction before the water became high enough to cover your waist, you'd almost think it would have to be, what, five, six, eight hundred metres? Who would know? Today was departure day for Dion and Sam and the grandkids, and of course that left Sally and I at the campground on our own. As we watch them drive away, it almost gives you that feeling that it's all over. The vast majority of the campers for the weekend are now gone of course and uh, I guess they've got to go back to work but we just managed to sit back and relax and enjoy the slow day that we had before we too had to move on the following day. Well this brings us to the end of another video and uh, oh, it's a, a lovely place out here at the Parham campground, this beach that I'm on now. It's uh, certainly very firm and uh, not boggy at all, so even though the tide does go out a long way, it's quite nice to walk on the, the beach and the sand in the low water. Great for kids, I guess, if you want to have them out here paddling in the shallows, but no, we've enjoyed our time down here, and uh, 
bit of crabbing there whilst we're here, which was very good. And uh, we move on from here. We go over to Moonta Bay on the York Peninsula. So that'll be the next video going up. So until that one does go up, you take care and look after yourself. If you like the video that you just watched, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of our videos, click on the subscribe button. And once you've done that, change the bell notification to all. That way, every time that we do uploads to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified. Thank you.